Welcome everyone to another series of blooms for you. Cousin It is here enjoying a little bit of the afternoon shade. It has been a very hot day today and suddenly there's cloud cover and the temperatures have dropped at least four degrees. So we are back in a little bit of a chill mode. There's still some blooms left that I would like to dedicate. For me, every bloom counts. So thank you very much for tuning in onto this video. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you so much for subscribing. If you haven't done so already, I would really appreciate it if you did. It would mean a lot to also see you in the comments. I am always very, very happy to see new names. And on the list you go, and then we will find a bloom for you at some point down the line when the orchids do what they do. In the meantime, Cousin It is here for everybody just listed in whichever category you may be. There's something else I would like to make sure that everybody knows. This is a busy, busy blooms for you. Lots of spikes, lots of names, and a lot of channels are involved as well. And for that reason, I just wanted to make mention that if I can suss that you have a channel and you make videos, I always, always put the name of the channel in the description plus your link. So I do hope that you enjoy this upcoming Blooms For You series. And if your name has not been mentioned today, trust me, you've left me a comment, you are on the list. So let's get on with it. Who would have thought that after all these years of me thinking that this orchid is virused, it just has some funky little quirks that I'm now just gonna get accustomed to. But look at these blooms of my Lelio Cattleya Fuchs Orange Nugget Dresden. Long name, smallish blooms. Oh, but they are so pretty. And they are for Natalia Tsitsova. Natalia Tsitsova. Or Natalia Tsitsova. Let me know, Natalia, if I pronounced your name correctly. So my little orange nugget, as I like to call it, very, very short and brief, otherwise it is a mouthful, has had its trials and tribulations. If you've been on my channel long enough, you know it's had a copper bath, because I always thought that these spots here would be signs of a virus, even though the blooms are absolutely pristine. There's nothing wrong with the blooms. Now it's been three years in a row. And I did ignore this orchid last year for quite some time because I thought if you are virus, you're going segregated from my collection. So I didn't give it much care apart from what it needs and requires, but I wasn't all over it all the time. Still, it came out with a growth and I have four, well, three and a half beautiful blooms on this cluster of a spike. This is going to be a different year for my orange nugget. This is going to be taken care of just like all the others this time around. There will be no segregation because if it's pulled through and keeps doing this for me, there's a spot here, but that is due to water. That is nothing to be concerned about. And the flaring is all even. So I'm very, very comfortable and very happy to be able to give this to you, Natalia Sitsova. This is um, amazing. And for the first year, I'm detecting a fragrance. She has that typical Cattleya fragrance, floral. Just because of the color, I'm going to say there's a bit of apricot nuance in there. But I think that color also affects what the brain is picking up because of this apricot orange that she has. It's very mild. Not much to it, it's not in your face, but for the first time, yep, she's got a fragrance. She's pretty. Now I did not wait for the fourth bloom to open. I wanted to make sure that this doesn't happen to the other blooms. I wanted to be able to at least give as pristine blooms as possible and not risk it any further. So Natalia Sitsova, thank you so very, very much for your support on my channel. I really appreciate it. I hope that you're doing well and that everything is going your way in your part of the world. My Lelio Cattleya 
Fuchs Orange Nugget Dresden. She blooms for you. Thank you. Um, yes, very unconventional, <laughs> but I think you could see why. I didn't know how else to film this. The orchid lives in an egg crate and she has six massive, massive spikes. And these spikes bloom for Heidi Wallace, K.A.M. Jagadish Kumar, Ernestina Cruz, Randy's Orchids, Mary Zed, and Plant Mama Tatiana. And check her out. We are going to have to go in, but I wanted you to see the extent of this beast of an orchid from a distance. We can go in and have a little look around while I say thank you to everyone I've just mentioned. Let's get in a little bit closer. <laughs> this is one of my big orchids, as you can tell, and not every bud has opened yet. With this orchid, if you were to wait until all the buds had opened, then you would probably lose 20% yeah, of the bloom spectacle because the blooms drop quite quickly as new blooms open. Needless to say, the orchid will be approximately six to seven weeks in bloom because you can see how many buds there are still to go. And aren't they amazing? Big black buds. Pulmonara Masai Red is seriously a beast of an orchid. And when I got her, I had no idea she would get this enormous that I would need an egg crate to somehow maneuver her from place to place. That's why I hardly move her once she is in bloom or once she starts her spikes. Then she goes up on a level of a shelf in the blooming alley where I can just leave her be. I flush her then very, very rarely. I let the spikes grow and let them go naturally, as you can see by the direction of them, towards the light. So there's no way of putting this up on any kind of staging area and getting in and having a look-see just by her size <laughs> and the limited space. Absolutely amazing, a show, a spectacle. She had to be in my collection simply because of her name, Masai. Been there, I've danced with them. Beautiful, beautiful, magnificent tribe. And it is quite fitting that this orchid is called that because of the red cloth that the Maasai wear. And she is Maasai red because the lip has no signs of any white in it. You can get the Maasai, the regular one, and there's a bit of white in the lip. But this one does not have any of that. So we see her from the back, but I needed to step back far enough so you could see the whole orchid and how I positioned her so that we can actually walk around her <laughs> as opposed to crouching up against something that doesn't do her justice. The color here on the left is true. This is where a little bit of sun is still touching the orchid, but she is very, very dark burgundy and very, very ominous in her spikes. They truly are magnificent. Last time I counted the buds, I had about 95. I've had three blooms drop since some of them have opened, but yeah, this is one way of filming an orchid. You walk around it. Gorgeous. Look at the size of those pseudobulbs as well. Look at that. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is they're just huge. Never expected this. So she has to live outside in my climate. That's why the leaves look a little bit damaged, but there's no room for her in my dining room for the winter 
she would prefer it a little bit warmer. But if she keeps blooming like this and it's only about leaf tips, then happy days. You can see there's a bit of sun there as they brighten up. So yes, again, Heidi Wallace, K-A-M, Jagadish Kumar, Ernestina Cruz, Randy's Orchids, Mary Zed, and Plant Mama Tatiana. For your support on my channel, I want to dedicate my six spikes to you as a thank you. And also as a thank you from my Colmenara Masai Red. Oh, look at that rich color. Truly, truly spectacular. Thank you, everyone. Oh my goodness, I do love me my big orchids. They never cease to amaze me. They never cease to impress me. But I must say, my heart beats for the little ones as well. And this one is giving me problems. So I'm just gonna fiddle around together with you. This is my Lelia and Sveltsii. I have a relatively calm day today and it's cloudy and her yellow is so intense that when I let go and she just bops around, the camera can't pick it up. This is a yellow that not even chicks have. It is amazing, fabulously amazing. But before I go on, I want to dedicate these blooms to Tsapsui Channel NYC. I saw you the first time in my fall orchids video where there was a beautiful display of all kinds of fall colors last year in 2020. So your name came on the list. And here we are with Lelia and Sveltsiai. And these bloom for you to say thank you so very, very much for your support on my channel. Tsapsui channel NYC. This bloom was the first to open. It's lasting an age, but I've got some spotting already on the petals. She hasn't touched any water. She didn't get rained on. These two blooms then opened rather quickly together, but took a long time to open. And this one was open for a while, all on its lonesome. But look at that. With all the technology that humans have, Nature calls the shots. Unintended, unintended. Isn't she a cutie? She's not fragrant. She has a beautiful little frilly accent on the lip there, just curls back. Very ropiculous Lelia styly. And the rest of the orchid is down there. <laughs> the spike is approximately uh, 20, 40, uh, 45 centimeters from where the orchid is. <laughs> Look at that. So the orchid herself is 20 centimeters. And then, mm, ta -da. isn't that impressive? I always said I can't have a Lelia answer because of the length of the spike. And now I have an Ensfeltsiae with a spike that is much more delicate and that I have to accommodate and hopefully not break. And I am so glad I didn't break it. Oh my goodness. We have been through a lot trying to keep spikes intact and I wasn't fully successful with all of them. But the Ensfeltsia, yes. It definitely needs my hand, otherwise the color just goes away. Gorgeous, gorgeous orchid. Can you imagine, and this is what we always say, right? Can you imagine having like three or four spikes like this all bloom at once? I can. <laughs> so Tapsui Channel, New York City or NYC, my Lelia and Sveltsiai, as well as myself, we say thank you so much for your support on my channel. Sticking with the theme of small for Martina Faust, my Sophronitis coccinia bloom. Very, very surprised to see her bloom. 
She is in the middle of getting transitioned into a semi-hydro setup and shouldn't be blooming at all. I let her bloom because she has enough reserves and I will be taking this bloom off prematurely because these blooms can last six to eight weeks and it is a much, much smaller version of a bloom than she would normally have. They would be double the size, but seeing as she's transitioning, there is not enough in this orchid to bring out a bloom that has the regular size. And that is why I will be taking this bloom off and give the orchid a quick rest and don't exert any more energy on her. But while I have her, Martina Faust, I want to dedicate her to you and wish the camera, there we go maybe, would do her justice. This red, why do I start talking quietly when it comes to the little ones? <laughs> this red is something out of a fairy tale. She reminds me of a Masdevalia ignea, although I've never seen Masdevalia ignea, but what I see from the videos on others, it has got to be so close. And then the little markings in the lip there go from yellow to oranges. And she is a little bit bruised because she's been through a lot. And I have a feeling this growth is gonna try and do the same. But depending on the status of the orchid, I don't think I'm going to let that bud even develop if it does start to develop. I like though that the new growth is looking much greener and healthier and you can see how desiccated the rest of her is. It's only a question of time for her to produce roots, but while she's in bloom, she won't be producing roots and that's why this bloom will be coming off prematurely, but not before I say thank you very, very much, Martina Faust, for your support on my channel. And I wanted to give you my Sophronites Boxinia as a thank you. I really appreciate having you here. I'm sorry if this video is getting too long, so I just want to throw in thank you so very, very much for being here. If you're still here at this point in time to when I get to my golden peacock, it has to be a cloudy day, otherwise I do struggle with the color on this one. This is for Cade Channel. You also showed up in my fall orchids and I wanted to say thank you so very much for supporting me on my channel with an orchid that has fall colors. Just wanted to make sure that if you do like the oranges, that you get an orange and I may have to go up a little bit. I do apologize for the speckling on the orchid leaves as such, but there are maintenance preventative measures going on and fungicide treatments, etc. Not that I believe she needs it, but she has been through the ringer since her repot, and these are stress factors that can bring on pathogens and things like that when orchids are going through a winter after having been mangled in the previous season and are still trying to get roots. Needless to say, I'm so pleased though that I could manage to get this growth to grow and not abort, a little bit smaller, a little bit of calcium deficiency, all normal when an orchid has lost the majority of its roots and is getting re-established. But she did bloom and that's why she's a keeper for me. She is a trooper and maybe the next growth that is already coming down here will produce more blooms because I can get up to six blooms on a single spike and I hope to achieve that again. But Cade Channel, my Procatavola Golden Peacock, this spike, these blooms are for you. Say thank you ever, ever so much for your comment on the fall video back in October of 20. I hope that you're doing well. Hope everything is under control in your part of the world. If you're spring or if you're autumn, either way, thank you ever so much for being here. And in order to say goodbye, I know we always revisit Cousin It. He's over there, he's good.
but on a cloudy day like this, my silver bush really, really stands out. In bloom again. So happy to see these blooms. Sometimes I go and nip out whatever has dried off. I'm so pleased I have a puppy that has been stripping it from the underside. So I've tried to keep it a bit contained. Normally it spills out and over all the way down to the floor. But King had other ideas, so I've been cutting it back. But what we have, oh, it's so pretty. And it is so soft. These are the fuzziest, softest, most tactile leaves from a garden plant. I love this plant. Absolutely love it. Thought I would show that to you as we wrap up this episode of Blooms For You and say thank you so very, very much for watching everybody. If you're new, once again, let me remind you, please leave a comment. Let me know you're here. And let's get you on the list and then we'll find a bloom. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.